Hello, hello, hello. This is 3D or 2D.com's The 3D Show. Put on your 3D glasses now. 3D glasses not included. And if you're wondering what the 3Ds are in the 3D show, well, they stand for discussion, debate, and the news. I will not be talking about Disney ruined Star Wars. And or the base. Or the base. Or the beers. But we will probably talk about Avengers. And the Mario. I do hope you enjoyed the show. The show. Get it? Duh. Duh. <laughs> Okay, welcome to episode 38, uh, not 38.1 or 38.2, 38 of The 3D Show. I'm Adolf Vega, your host, and with me as always is James, James Tate. Tate. Jinx, you can't talk anymore. Podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Jinx. Alright, um, so first we've got to talk about a new trailer for Star Trek that came out. Um, you know yeah, you know, this one doesn't look too bad, actually. I didn't think that this was too terrible. It is better. Yeah. But it really doesn't show what's going on. It's just... Yeah, like, yeah, they're kind of leaving that a secret. I was like, okay... They like and dislike, you know? Yeah, it's like, just action, action, action. It's like, you gotta tell me something. I don't know yeah. what's going on. And I kind of like how it's like, he's mentioning his dad or something. Because that was... I don't know. It I seems like it's going to be a major plot element. Yeah, it's like I don't remember Kirk mentioning his dad in the two movies really that much, you know, so maybe I just don't remember. I don't know. It looks better. I still... Yeah, it looks better. Like, it doesn't look as completely garbage as the first one did. Yeah, and um, they actually released a Star Trek uh, TV show trailer teaser thing, um, too, and it basically is just like the logo and saying new villains, new aliens, new scenarios, you know. So there's not much of anything there. But, you know, maybe this is like the, you know, good starting point for Star Trek. I don't know. I, I, I don't want it to become a, just an action movie because it's supposed to be smarter than that. But we'll see, you know. All right. So you got another trailer update, James. The Your favorite movie this summer What? What's the movie? You know that the new Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. So they released another uh, Terabad trailer um, for this film, and you know it's it's you see more of what the film's going to be. And uh, one thing that's really interesting though is there was a guy on Reddit who kind of spilled the entire. Yeah, and you know people on Reddit, they're always just like giving rumors out to the film. And uh, so for this film, the big rumor was that he had like seen 70% of the film because he was working on it and it was just as bad as the trailers. Mm -hmm. And he started like giving off a list of um, scenes like and he connected them together uh, mm -hmm. and kind of like – and because of this trailer, we now know that most likely he was right. Like, that was a real person who saw the film. Wow. Because we, we can actually piece the scenes he predicted months before together right now. So, yeah, I think the tone is better in this. They don't try to yeah. attach it to the old movies, um, which is a much better idea, which I don't know why they did that before, you know, and... It, it you know, still looks really goofy and dumb, but it I don't know. I don't think it looks as bad as the first one, but you, you know something's up when uh, they didn't release this on YouTube. They released this on Facebook and Twitter first. And, and just for the lulls, I did see the YouTube, and the likes, the, the disliked were still extraordinarily high. Like, people still hate this film. So, yeah, that, that's not good news. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, it, it legitimately looks, regardless if they're female or male, it legitimately looks like it's a bad movie, period. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter one way or another. On You know, it just looks dumb. So we'll see. Maybe the, the actual movie will be better than the trailers. You know, a lot of times trailers lie, you know, but we'll see. I, I'm very pessimistic right now about it. 
okay, so Nintendo had some interesting news about um, the NX. So it's not really the successor to the Wii U or the 3DS, but it's a new way to play. What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new way to play. What does that mean? Like, I've heard, um, uh, I've heard like a touch screen. Uh, the the rumor for the longest time was that the patent or whatever for the controller would be a touch screen controller. Uh huh. That sounds terrible to me. Like, not no buttons. It's just like a, you know, just yeah. like a pad, and then that's what you use to control your character. That just seems terrible to me, personally. Yeah, um, so, I don't know, is it, I, I'm guessing this is part of just a weird translation, and it more or less is them saying this is not going to have the same controllers as the Wii or the 3DS, it's going to be its own platform, you know, it's going to have its own, you know, controller, its own games, I don't think it's going to, you know... It's not going to have that name. It's not going to be the new, new 3DS or the Wii U2 or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Super Wii. The Wii is not going to be yeah, part of the yeah. name. You know? Yeah. The, yeah. So, you know, Nintendo has done this before with, like, the DS and the Game Boy. And the Game Boy, you know, DS wasn't part of the Game Boy successor. It was a third pillar to the, you know, way back in the day. And it was the successor that just weren't wanting to admit it, you know? Yeah. So, the, you know, the NX is the next thing, whatever it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's going to directly compete with the 3DS, so I don't think it will have 3D. I don't really know. Uh, stereoscopic 3D, I, I don't think that's happening again, unfortunately. And Yeah, um, yeah. I, if it does have motion controls, it won't be the main focus, but who knows? You know, so I don't think, I don't know. We have no idea what this thing is. So. Yeah, yeah, we we really don't know anything about this. Uh, this and, and it just goes to show you uh, how weird um, the, the whole thing is because, uh, you know, it's it's supposed to be, the, the, the NX was supposed to be released this year. And yet we have no information about it whatsoever. So um, keep it on Nintendo's side. They said that they're going to start making some movies in the next few years. Um, what does that mean? So they're going to make it in-house. And um, and it, it, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't think that it's going to be like. Does that mean we're going to get a Mario movie? Or a Zelda movie, you know, they don't really are not known to making. Um, I mean, they haven't really made like a Mario movie or show since the '90s. It's the Mario. So I don't know. It, it, okay, they're not really well known for being making their own videos. You know, the cutscenes and games are not anything amazing. You know they they do have right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, that by in house, what they really mean is that they're going to watch it like a hawk, and you know, pretty much be over anyone that is doing it, and like own them or you know, be direct control over it. Um, so I imagine it to be more heavy handed than other things because they don't want someone to screw up their stuff, basically. So, I don't, I don't know what this, you know, it takes a long time to make a movie, and Nintendo still is doing NX stuff, and they're doing mobile stuff, and I don't know if this is too much, you know, I don't know if it's a smart decision to do it in-house, you know, so it it just doesn't make sense. It's just kind of strange. It's really it's really odd actually cuz like this cuz Nintendo if you notice has always been extremely hesitant 
to like make a property about their game that hasn't been uh, uh like y- you know ever since the CDI, you know. Yeah, the, the you know the Zelda. Yeah, that old Ganon's no match for the king. Link, go to Gamelon and find my father. Great! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and the yeah, the, that was a disaster. And, <laughs> disaster. You know, they just want to make sure that they don't have things that ruin the brand. Yeah, yeah, because I think Nintendo knows that they're that those things are a laughing stock. Yeah, like they know those have been a meme for a very long time. So, um, yeah. I think Nintendo recently gave up the trademark to uh, Hyrule Net Warriors in America. I don't know what that even means. You know, if that means that there's not going to release another one or what. The the DLC, the first one just came out this week um, for Hyrule Warriors Legends, and it you know it has um, one of the characters from Midna from um, Wind Waker talking, and um, it, she's okay, and, you know, whatever. I don't know if that means more Legends games are not going to come out. And, you know, they changed their purpose, so they, they're they thinking that they're more of a brand than a video game huh. company. That's kind of weird. So, like, there's, I don't know, the medical stuff they may start doing. They're just trying to expand out to be more than just video games, which is understandable, but they've really kind of not been good at anything but the video games. You know, even... Amiibo had a really rough start, you know? So, I don't know. Alright, so let's move on. Um, We got some pretty big DC movie news. So, um, apparently Warner is not happy about how Superman Batman did in the box office. Which, look, in fairness, it made like $800 million. So, that's not nothing. But Captain America Civil War made a billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, okay, so I was proven correct. That's, that was my prediction. So, yeah, um, you know, basically that means that in a what, month that Batman Superman has come out, in like two and a half weeks, three weeks, Civil War has come out, it's made more money. And, you know, they wanted to hit that billion. They really did. And, um, you know, so they're disappointed, and they spent a lot of money, a lot of issue, you know, and the reception is very mixed. There's people that love it, there's people that hate it, there's people that think it's good but not great. Um, I'm part of the good, not great. James, you're part of the eh, kind of bad. But yeah, <laughs> you know, still it has not made it, it. You know, considering that the two biggest DC characters, Batman, Superman, are in the title. In the movie, this should be the biggest movie of the year, and you know. It's... Yeah, and, and they got hammered. They got destroyed. I mean, on every single level, on money, on uh, you know, everything by Civil War. So, Warner Brothers has gotten uh, John Berg and Jeff Johns to co-run uh, DC Films now and to help co- uh, correct it. So this is a big story from The Hollywood Reporter that they are going to be overseeing this. Basically what Kevin Feige is doing in Marvel, where there's like one person watching over everything, you know, that's going to be these two people. And, you know, they have promised to try to make things more light and more hopeful because, you know, a lot of people have complained that they're just too dark and grim, you know. And uh, they they have said that they're going to try to work – um, to make the best product they have and get the best people behind things. Um, so, you know, Kevin Feige has been a fantastic leader of the Marvel, so if they want to try to copy him, that's a good idea. Yeah, Kevin Feige did a really good job, you have to admit. And, um, you know, John's one of the people that are on here. He's the one um, people that are helping make the DC TV shows, Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl, so he actually, you know, people really like those shows, and I actually really like them too. Um, so, you know, th- they actually, in that related news, Supergirl is going to be on CW now instead of CBS, and that they're going to have like a big 
four show episode um, arc, you know, huh. and so Supergirl is being part of that, and the person behind that is now doing that. So, it so kinda... okay, I, one thing I don't really get is like when Supergirl started, they're like, oh yeah, it's not part of Arrow or Flash or whatever, and then now it is. Like, why? Okay. So, um, in the Flash Arrow universe, um, they're in Earth One. Okay. And there's Earth Two where there is a different Flash and different parallel versions of the characters. Okay. And Supergirl is on Earth 3. Oh. And Flash experimented with trying to find a way to run faster. Flash is well known for being able to jump back in time through the dimensions and stuff. And he jumped to her dimension and helped her out in that show. So she is separate from that universe. So Superman is not an actual character in the Arrow Flash universe. But Supergirl oh. is does have it him in there. So they don't actually have a Flash or Arrow in the Supergirl universe, but they do have Superman and quite a few other DC characters. Oh. So it's separate but not you know, it's you know, they no, have knowledge of each other. So if that person is gonna be the one helping make this, then this could lead down the line with D C having a crisis on multiple Earths and having the TV shows connect with the movies. So this is mm. really good news. This is something that, they, you know, they're finding... I don't know. It sounds a little bit confusing for most audiences, and, you know, it's... Marvel has it really good. So just parallel dimensions, you know, I don't think that's too hard to people understand. You know, different dimension, different world, you know, people... I guess. Sliders. Don't you remember Sliders, the TV show, James? People jumping from dimensions yeah. to dimensions. What if you could travel to parallel worlds the same year, the same Earth, only different dimensions? A world where the Russians rule America. Or where your dreams of being a superstar came true. Or where San Francisco was a maximum security prison. My friends and I found the gateway. Now the problem is finding a way back home. So, anyway, and other news for DC Front, they actually confirmed a Harley Quinn movie, which we kind of predicted a couple episodes back, um, that is like, so, um, that makes sense, they kind of hinted that they're going to do, like, um, a girl squad, where, you know, they have Batgirl and, um, the other character, other female characters that kind of work together with uh, Harley Quinn. Um, what is it called? They had an episode of, of the Batman. The oh, you series. mean the other other like people that she worked with, the other villains? Yeah, when she. You mean with, like Poison po- Ivy? Poison Ivy and Catwoman. Yeah, so it, they're kind of getting that idea going. So you know that worked. It was actually really funny and cute, and it worked for a girly stuff. And uh, you know, if they're gonna try to do girl stuff, then that actually makes sense. You know, um, so I'm okay with Harley Quinn getting her own movie. You know, obviously we got to see how she does in yeah. uh, Suicide Squad, but um, yeah, I'm gonna see that one. So and um, so changing gears completely here, we got. Um, you know, we always have to throw in some 3D printed news, and um, apparently a dog now has 3D printed legs, the two front legs. Um, so the dog was born with um, not, I guess, uh, fully developed, you know, front legs, and uh, they decided to make 3D printed legs. You know, and it's just kind of like wheels, but it wow. works. And like That's the, crazy. You know, the dog would run around and he's happy, and as you know, it's I started seeing this all over the place where the dog is here, there, and, you know, they actually have cats, too, that have three printed legs. So, you know, it's helping out a bunch of things, you know. Yeah, it's helping out a bunch, you know. 
So yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know if you're a dog person, James, but I love dogs. So, mm-hmm. you know, if my dog doggy had broken legs, I'll try to get three printed new ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, three D printing—it's like going to be so many cool things you can do with it. I mean, just imagine how convenient it would be if it's like, oh, I want this, and then you just print it at your home. So, you know? yeah, um, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, what things are going to happen that never, yeah. no one intended it. Through I, printing I to mean, be. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for this. Uh, I can't wait for all the cool stuff. Uh, you know, this was a kind of a miniature segment a little bit, but, uh, you know, I felt that I had enough good uh, news. You know, we, we kind of breezed past a lot of it, but, you know, uh that's that's just the great thing about having a weekly show or, you know, mostly weekly. Yeah, you know, we do have a little bit of VR news. Like um, finally Google has uh, made it so that you could actually use um, a Google Cardboard on iOS, on iPhones. So that's, that's interesting. You know, I think that as we go on, and this was my prediction at the beginning of the year, I think that virtual reality is going to be utilized more and more, and you kind of see that now. I mean, I keep bringing it up, but uh, real estate's now using virtual reality, or at least thinking about using it. And um, we also got word that IMAX is going to help make some movies in uh, virtual reality to help kind of get people interested and maybe go into IMAX theater and having the VR experience there kind of thing. That's and, pretty cool, too. You know, there's some interesting VR experiments going around. You know, I, I read about one where um, you basically are in solitary confinement for about, like, an hour. And you just kind of get a sense of there's nothing going on. You're literally in a cell for, like, an hour and a half or two hours or whatever. Wow. And it is pretty convincing and scary and, you know, sad. Because there's nothing to do, and it makes you feel like yeah. you actually are being in solitary. And that's an interesting way to kind of get people to understand, you know, how it actually would be in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to say, oh, of course, that's not bad. That's not too hard. But if you're actually in there, in that, you know, virtual environment, there's nothing, yeah. you know. You know, th- those kind of things are interesting. And we, we don't know how it's going to be in the next, you know, ten years, five years. You know, if it's going to... Yeah, who knows? Maybe in 10 years, no one will even be leaving their houses. <laughs> They'll be playing their NX and watching their DC. Yeah. <laughs> watching Phase 5 of Marvel. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, you know, it's a shorter episode than usual, like you said. But we get to cover a lot of ground. And, uh, you know, that way we don't stay too far back with uh, feet things. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy All right. it. Okay. You're right. Bye. Bye. All right, so that's going to wrap up this podcast. Remember to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, love, whatever, heart it, be something. 3D or 2D.com can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. And if you want to send us email, our email address is email 3D or 2D at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.